you know, it's amazing. It seemed like it go from summer to Christmas. Yeah, I don't know about y'all, but it seemed like time just flew. Like it was like summertime. It was Halloween, then it was Christmas. Yeah. You know, and uh, it, it's just like th Thanksgiving is is like Christmas Eve now. And it's like boom, you know, we here and then, then we out. Besides y'all who, who get up at 5 a.m. to go shopping and then come to church late. Uh, was that you, Felicia? Amen. Oh, are we locked? I didn't mean to say your name, but people smile. Amen, amen. You know. But uh, yeah, yeah, it seems like, you know, we just blow by uh, Thanksgiving to get to Christmas, especially if you're aware of the hypocrisy of our country uh, and pilgrims and Indians sitting down and eating together and sharing a meal. That make you blow by it. But let me say the same way we took a pagan holiday and celebrated Christ's birth. Amen. Amen. We need to take Thanksgiving and make sure we still celebrate not God just yeah. the same. Amen? Amen. 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 You know, it's a tradition in the Anderson household for Thanksgiving. We always open up our table uh, to family and friends, especially those who don't have family and friends that they can eat with. So every year we open up our table and we have additional guests that we have, which really blesses my heart. The other tradition we have is we go around the table and we all say what we are thankful for, you know, and it's amazing when you hear uh, those testimonies at the table of saying what we are thankful for. And, and today, um, we're going to look at one of my favorite psalms, Psalm 34, is a psalm of, of, of thanks uh, given and uh, We've heard from some of our children last week. We heard from some of the people that we serve uh, in the community last week talking about what they are thankful for. And today we're going to hear um, some words of David, a testimony of thanks coming from David in Psalm 34, 1 to 8. And as I finish communicating this sermon, I'm going to open up the floor for you to have an opportunity to give thanks as well. That's not something we do all the time, but I think it's something that we still should do Amen. Uh, as a church and have some, some testimony. Amen? Amen. Uh, this psalm is a psalm that shares lessons that David has learned. David has been uh, in a period of discouragement. He had fleed uh, uh, Philistia, and, and he pretended that he was insane. He was fearing for his life, and then God uh, delivered him. Amen? Amen. And, and sometimes we need to hear about other people's deliverance. Sometimes a testimony is needed in order to pick us up. Sometimes we can be in our own stupor, if you will. We forget how good God is and what he has done. And sometimes when other people begin to open their mouth and begin to share and communicate and testify about how good God is, it reminds us of some things, you know. Yesterday, I had some company coming over, and I was uh, warming up the, the lower level, and I put on one of those space heaters, and we went upstairs, and we chilling, and I got downstairs warming up. And I asked Kim, you cooking? You know, because it smelled like something was burning. And she looked at me as if she burned food, like, no, nah, that ain't me. I go down in, 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 down in the basement, and the plug had begun melting into the wall, and the electrical fire was about to break out. The good news was is the circuit breaker cut off. I was scared to cut it back on. I called Sam, our church electrician. Uh, and, uh, Sam, you got to get over here. I got, I got company coming. It's about quarter to five. They're supposed to be here at five. I almost set the house on fire, and I'm scared to turn the power back on. And uh, Sam came over, and he had the business. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But that is just a, a testimony of thanks. That could have went so much worse. Yeah. And uh, you hear about electric fires every, every year. And I'm glad it was me and not one of my kids leaving the space heater on and walking away. Because you would have heard more of a testimony. Amen. <laughs> about God <laughs> spared the rod. <laughs> no. But uh, let's pray. Let me go on here with David Gottlieb. Father, we thank you. Give you praise and thanksgiving, Lord God. Testimonies 
every single day that you give us breath, that you clothe us in our right mind, that you allow us to gather together and to worship your name, Lord God. I pray uh, today for this message that it would fall on good ground, Lord God, that we would be reminded that we serve a good God, Lord God, and how much of a blessing uh, you are to us just by allowing us to hear uh, your word. Lord, thank you for the blood of your son Jesus shed on Calvary that includes us in this family. Lord, and if there's those here who are listening online in, in this building that don't know you, Lord, let yourself be known to them this morning, we pray. Yes, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Psalm 34, verse 1. David opens up this psalm, and I think it's about seven, eight things that we can see um, that a testimony of, 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 of God's goodness comes out of it. He opens up with, I will bless the Lord at all times. The songs this morning was so much on time. I was listening to my old school gospel music this morning, and my wife said, do you want to go to one of those old churches that play that music? I like, babe, I just like the music. It make me reflect. It make me think back. And then I come in here and we got on the oldies but goodies this morning. Amen. Amen. You know, sometimes you need to hear him or two to remind you of him. Come on now. You know, come on. Sometimes, you know, we got to hear some things. And, and so David says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. Testimony has to be personal. That's the first P. I'm going to give you about seven of these. It has to be personal. When he says, I will, he's making a declaration unto the Lord that I will bless the Lord at all times symbolizes a daily acknowledgement of God in our lives. Amen? Amen? Regardless of our current circumstances, what we might be dealing with, we still should be able to bless the Lord. Sometimes our lips are tight. Because of what we're going through, and we don't give God the praise that he deserves while we're going through, and we wonder why we're still going through it. The Bible says, out of the mouth, out of the, out of the heart, the mouth speaks, right? And, and this means that if, if his praise is going to be on our lips, his word got to be in our hearts, right? And, 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 but sometimes I find that people, especially Christians, we can complain. <laughs> Help me, somebody. More than we give God praise. Right? If we could complain every day, surely we should be able to praise God for something well, every day. Amen. We got to flip our attitude and have some gratitude. Yeah. Amen? amen? Say things like, you know what? Every time, every time you think you're going to complain, be like, you know what? My feet hurt. But praise God, I can walk. Amen. Amen. That, that's how, you know, that's how I want. Like, uh, you get up in the morning, I hate going to work. But praise God, I got a job. Amen. Amen. That's flipping that attitude for what? Gratitude. Every time we complain, we give God praise. We say, I will bless the Lord at all times, meaning that we are acknowledging the bigger picture. Amen. Share and share that first one with Tia when y'all got home since she was late like you. Number two. Are we on? I will boast in the Lord. The humble will hear it and be glad. Amen. Not only does our testimony need to be uh, personal, but it also should be passionate. He says, I will boast in the Lord. Boast in the Lord means I'm going to brag about my God, about who he is, about all he's done, about his abilities, about his character. And it is not just a, a, a boast. It's, it's, it's I, my soul will boast in the Lord. Meaning, meaning my praise is not just lip service. Sometimes we can get up and we can just sing. Sometimes we can get up and we can say, somebody say, say hallelujah. And we say hallelujah. Somebody say, praise God, praise God. Somebody say, amen. That, that could be lip service if we don't mean it. Amen? But when he says, my soul will boast in the Lord, right? He said that, that, that my praise is, is deep. My, my praise is real. But sometimes our pride can hinder our praise. Huh? Pride can hinder that because we don't really want to acknowledge how low sometimes we can go. And if we don't acknowledge how low we can go, we don't also acknowledge how deep the Lord digs 
to lift us up out of that. Right? We, we front sometimes. Christians front. Right? We front like we're not that bad, like we don't get that depressed, or we don't get that scared. We, we, we front. Right? Like it's not really. And I don't really feel this. But the truth is we do. We do get scared. We do get worried more than we should. We do doubt more than we should. Right? We, we, we do have, have these issues of, of dropping. And God picks us up every time we drop. Am I right about it? Every time we drop. Somebody here told me they ain't said in the last week. Who, who didn't have a son in the last week? Just, just raise your hand. You know what I mean? I'm going to tell you the devil is a lie. Amen? But guess what? God still forgave you. Right? He still forgave you. Every time you do it, everyone you do, past, present, and future, the blood has taken care of that. Right? That's what I'm talking about. Only when you acknowledge that. Only when you acknowledge that your stuff smell. Amen? Can you acknowledge how good your God is? When you pretend your stuff don't smell, you're denying the very power of the cross that then brought you forgiveness. People need to know we struggle, right? They need to know we even fall sometimes. We ain't got to tell everybody. But you got to tell about him picking you up, him dusting you off. Those around us hear that, it says, and they be glad when they hear the testimony. He says in, in verse 3, proclaim the Lord's greatness with me, right? It, let us exalt his name together. He says it's, it's not just personal, it's not just passionate, but now he want to get public with it. like, you know what? I'm inviting you into my praise. I'm inviting you into to my story. I'm inviting you in to, to join me in worshiping my God. How sweet it is when somebody has a contagious faith. When somebody has a contagious faith that, that infectious love for the Lord. And, 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 and you see it in them. You, you hear it in them. They hug you with a hug of thanksgiving. They pray with you with a prayer of thanksgiving. They know how good God is. And they're willing to, to share that with you. In the moment they begin to share their testimony of how good God is, you want to share yours. Huh? That's my sister-in-law. You can't brag on your God around my sister-in-law. You can't get your testimony out. I ain't going to talk about that scene this morning. Amen. Yeah, I'm going to say her name. We're not going, are we? But, but let me tell you. You, you try to brag on your God. She's like, wait, 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 let me tell you. Wait, 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 like, bust around. Let her get worse. I'm like, yo, I can't even get mine out before she want to get hers out. That, that's that, 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 that idea that I just got that uh, uh, contagious infectious faith. I got a testimony waiting to be told. Don't start bragging on God. I got something to say about my God. You want to talk about how good God is. That's what I'm talking about. See, when you've been through some stuff, you don't got to bug, bug, bug. You don't got to beg somebody to brag on God. Am I right, Sam? When you've been through some stuff, Sam was working there and crying. Let me tell you, Pastor, how good God is. Like, I, 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 I ain't giving up your business. But he had a testimony. Amen. I, I thought he was coming over there to bless me with electricity. He blessed me with his testimony. He was ministering to me the whole time. But wait, Pastor, I'm like, you sure that's not on? Right? That's not hot. Right? That's how we good, right? Because he got tears flowing. I don't want it to hit the wire. I'm like, I'm listening to you. I'm riding with you. But can you back up from the electricity? Amen. But he was on fire. He was on fire, right? So David was calling people to participate with him in this testimonial worship, right? Because it lifts the hearts of those around you. It, it begins this robust worship when we can delight in the name of the true and living God. Somebody asked me. I remember interviewing him, and I and just recently in the new, is it okay to shout in our church? Because sometimes it's quiet up in this piece, right? They want to know, is it okay? I'm like, absolutely. Don't let the person next to you steal your praise. Don't let them steal your voice, because they want to be subdued. No, that don't mean you got to be. See, ain't no rock going to take my place, right? As long as I'm alive, go on glorify his holy name. You better open your mouth. Give God some praise. Wow. That mask be having you all tight and shutting up up in here. I'm just saying, right? 
Yeah, you know, some people think our worship team is here for entertainment. No, no, no. Right? They're here to help lead and direct us into worship. They're not here to worship for us. Huh? Sometimes we sit there like, go ahead, y'all, go ahead, y'all do the worship part. They're like, well, huh? No, they don't do the worship part. They lead, they facilitate. Right? They can't do worship for me. Amen? We can worship together. Right? But if you don't worship till you get here, then that's a whole never, never, that's a different sermon. But in verse 4, David says, I sought the Lord, and he answered me. He rescued me from all my fears. Right? So you're talking about personal, you're talking about passionate, you're talking about public. Then he gets prayerful with it, right? David worship of God, like ours, is based on our relationship with God. Right? When, when you prayed and you prayed and you sought the Lord's face, you should come to this place of peace. It don't mean it was answered, but it should be that peace. And there, there, in the petitioning of his presence, there is peace. It's that casting our anxiety on him because he cares for us. You know, it's, it's that, 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 that idea of, of, of hearing uh, his voice say, fear not, right? For I am with you. Again, it, it don't mean that, 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 that we don't have troubles. It don't mean that things in our life don't, don't cause us fear. But, but it's an acknowledgement of the one who has overcome the troubles. Amen. And that faith to overcome the fear. Right? And so he says, I, I sought the Lord. And so in our worship, you know, in our, in our testimonial tribute unto God, we should be seeking the Lord. Yeah. You ever sought the Lord with all you got? Yeah. Huh? You have a Lord, do you hear me? You ever cry out? Yeah. You ever shout yeah. to the Lord? If you ain't raise your voice to the Lord, yeah, you don't even know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm just tripping to you. Yeah. You ain't raise your voice yet to, to God. If you ain't hollering, God, yeah. you ain't called out his name yeah. as loud as you possibly could because you think if I shout loud and you can hear me, and you know how serious I am. When in reality, all you got to do is whisper in your mind when I open up your mouth. He knows. Yes. But yet, you don't want no mistakes to be about it. You want God to know I am calling on your name. Because as I seek you, as I lift you up higher, it seems like everything else begins to drop and, and fade away. That's what a prayerful testimony look like. He says in verse 5, those who look to him are radiant with joy. Their faces will never be ashamed. Radiant with joy. How do you walk out this building? You ever ride past some churches at the end of service? <laughs> Folks come out looking like, why are you standing in my way? Don't stand past my car. I mean, they breaking out the door to light their cigarettes. I, hey, look, I've been in church a long time. I'm going to tell you, church people, there's something special. Yeah. Yeah, you be like, what, what did, did the club just let out? Like, what just happened? I, like, who just let them folks out of where? Well. You know, I mean, I love it. We got to tell y'all, y'all got to go home from here. I mean, I appreciate the love and the laughs and the smiles and everybody standing outside and greeting and hugging and all of that. But that's what it's supposed to be like. It's amazing when you walk. I'm serious. You walk past the church and you see folks just come out with the meanest, nastiest look on their face. You're like, oh my. What happened in there? <laughs> right? Because you, you, if, if you've been in the presence of the Lord, it says your face should be radiant. There should be a glow about you because you've been with the living God. There should be something that when you walked in, you might have walked in heavy, but you came out light. You might have walked in discouraged, but you came out praising God. You might have walked in feeling like you were alone, but you walked out knowing not only did you have God with you, but you had some brothers and sisters holding you up. You shouldn't walk out of here with your face downcast. Say, this, this prayer is, is, is passionate, it's personal, it's public, it's prayerful, and it should pick you up. That's what a radiant face is. That's what authentic worship is. It should pick you up. It should help remove the doubt and give you some sense of assurance and reminds us that God 
is in control. Our adoration of him should lighten and brighten. Our day, we never have to be ashamed. I used to be ashamed to worship. Seriously. Because I was a real cool guy back in the day. I know y'all think I'm cool now, but I was really cool then. <laughs> too cool to worship. I was too cool to worship. I sat there like, yeah, that's my job. Yeah, you know I mean? Just like I'm listening to DAS in 99. Ain't that quiet? Get your joke. I'm like, yo, that's my job. You know? But just like I ain't dancing in the club, I was a seat dancer in the club. I was like, you like, yo, you, you think I can dance? You like, yo. Ah, need a double joint on one side. I was in church the same way. Folks is getting up and they screaming, they crying, and they worshiping. And I wanted to get up, but I was worried about how people would look at me when I got up. I was worried that they was going to judge my praise. You know? And then, then I also was wondering, like, yo, you, you're kind of heathen, you know? Because I, I, you know, I was like half in and half out. But when I'm when I'm in, the half that I'm in, I'm in. Like, you know what I mean? Like I could have had a jacked up week where I fell like four times, but the fact that I'm here on Sunday morning after falling four times this week, I'm ready to get my praise on, but I'm worried about how you're gonna look at me because you might have seen me fall one of those four times. You was passing me coming out when I was going in, but that's a different story. Right? It, it, it picks you up. And, and the truth is, we never have to be ashamed of coming into his presence because he sees us through the blood of his son, Jesus. Yeah. He don't see the stuff that we've done. We see what he sees what his son yeah. has done for us, right? Yeah. We never have to be ashamed of trusting in him because he is capable, amen, of handling amen. all our issues. We never have to be ashamed of, of, of lifting him up in front of others because our worship of him, if it's authentic, it's what separates us from everybody else, right? And so we don't all have to worship the same way, right? We, we, we can call on God in, in, in our own quiet way. We can get loud and call on God. There is no way, uniformity, that we have to do that, right? It has to just be on, on us. I'm a sinner saved by grace, amen, through the blood of his son, Jesus, that's my testimony, no matter you like it or accept it or not. He has accepted me, and therefore, I never have to be ashamed of who I am because I know whose I am. Amen. That's my testimony. Amen? Amen? And so you can't look at the Lord and, and walk away with your face downcast. True worship takes us, amen, away from true worries, right? Even if it's momentary, right? When I think about and talk about uh, who God is and all he has done, right? It, it's no way I can look at my stuff, right, and compare it, right, to my God and how great he is, right? There, there's a humility that comes with that. David says, this poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him from all his troubles. The angels of the Lord encamps around those who fear, and, and, and he rescues them. He, he, he's testifying about the divine presence of God. Sometimes in the heat of the battle, we needed to be reminded that we're not alone. We need, to, we, need, we need prayer that changes our perspective, right? This means that when we leave uh, his presence, we, we leave it seeing things his way. Amen? If you, if you get down and pray about an issue and you get up the same way you got down, you need to pray longer. Right? The two minutes don't work for you. Right? Don't, don't do the two minute prayer. And don't get up. Don't get up until you done heard from the Lord. Don't get up until he done spoke into your heart. Stay there for a minute. Right? If you're serious about it, stay there for a minute. Sometimes we don't labor in prayer. We wonder why we walk around downcast. Because we ain't spending enough time there. I'm not talking about repetition. I'm not talking about I got to do it every morning. If I'm talking about when you got an issue and you want to bring that before the Lord, bring it before the Lord and don't leave it. Right? Don't leave with it. Leave it right there with the Lord. Right? You leave with it. It was like you really didn't bring it and leave it for me if you picked it up and took it back with you. Huh? We defeat ourselves 
right? David testified about the, the presence and, 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 and he testified about how, right, he cried out and the Lord saved him for, from his troubles. It's this idea that at every point uh, and every time something is, is bothering us, we can bring it to him and we need to see that it will no longer be our problem. It's his issue now. You know what? I prayed about it and I gave it to God. Now it's up to God to do something about it. In the meantime, I can't carry it no more. Huh? Can, can you do that? Attempt that. Attempt to walk away and leave it with God. Attempt to just do that for, for a minute so you can walk away. Because the truth is, our issues, our problems, our troubles have an expiration date. Right? Either... You know, we, we, can, we can praise him uh, for, for what has taken place. We can praise him for, for what is yet to come. I used to hate when the senior choir would sing. Senior choir sang, uh, I, I, I ain't hating on the senior choir, but when they sang, it was always like, you felt like you was at a funeral. Right? Senior choir just had some song selections. You're like, yo, like, why they sing that? Right? I'm sitting there and they say, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing we Because I got their teeth right. When we all And I'm like, yo, they singing when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing it will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout for victory. And I'm like, pump your brakes. I'm not trying to roll just yet. It ain't a funeral, right? But what I realized is, is they had a trust in a bigger picture that I had not even the ability to see. The petty stuff I'm dealing with in my life, they so far past that. I didn't realize the peace they had when they were singing. They, they saw it as they, they, they recognized we were just passing through. I'm sitting there, you know, wrestling and fighting about bills, and they sitting there like, it's already paid, baby. <laughs> right? I, I, you know, we talking about pain in our body. They like, no, there's a new body waiting for you <laughs> right over there. I'm mad, I'm hurt, I'm talking about grief. They said, well, you're going to go to a place, there's no dying no more, there's no more tears, baby, no more tears over there, right? They had a perspective in light of eternity. Our perspective can be very small. We worried about tomorrow. Is it is it is it is it the Black Friday, the Small Business Saturday, the Cyber Monday, the I'm gonna skip church and go to the mall Sunday? It's that was for them online that's why you know from walking in the mall. But but we can be so short-sighted sometimes. Right? And I and I was young and I was short-sighted. I didn't I didn't get what they were really singing about. Once you get to this place in light of eternity, you know, when you know, I got more days behind me than I got on this earth in front of me. But I got more days in eternity than I can ever have on this earth, right? And when you begin to think in light of that, things don't seem so bad. Things don't seem so tough. David is saying when, when, you, when you cry out to the Lord, He's ultimately going to save you from all your troubles even now on this side. But surely, once you get the glory, they'll all be gone, right? He said, come and taste and see that the Lord is good. How happy is the person who takes refuge in him? Taste in the Bible is not here. Taste this spoon or I just mixed up this cake. Let me know if the bad it tastes good. No, it's not just... This, this kind of little taste, taste means come and experience. Open up your mind, open up your heart to see what God has in store for you. I'm going to tell you, 
Sometimes we can come to church and not only do we silence our, our praise, we try not to let God get so far in there. He start messing with our stuff. You start hearing the word, and don't that conviction begin to come? Right? You begin to think about the stuff you said that you should have said, the stuff you did you should have did. Then you just back it off. Let's just switch. You ever try to switch channels up in your own brain? Like, you know what? I don't even want to think about that. I don't want that conviction right now. I'm, I'm just going to switch. You know, I, know I, I see some people switch. Yeah. You just get that, that conviction, and you just try to switch the channel. Like, I don't even want to. Well, do that right now. Let me tell you, man. When you open up, when you come and open up and actually taste and see that the Lord is good, when you lower your defenses and you lower your reservations and you fully embrace the living God, right? Sometimes our, our worship is limited by us. The Holy Spirit inside of us wants to jump for joy, but we hold it at bay, Right? Our, our testimony should be powerful, not because we got some powerful things to say, but because the one who delivered us through the test is powerful. Amen? Amen. In a transitioning of letting go, that's where the power takes place. He has shown that he has all power in his hands. He's all powerful. He's all knowing. He's all present. He's the alpha. He's the omega. That's the reason why we go to him and bless is the person who takes refuge in him because he's all Powerful, right? He says in, in Jeremiah 32 and 27, Behold, I am the Lord, right? The God of all flesh. He says, Is anything too hard for me? In, in Exodus 15 and 16, he said, Your right hand, oh, glorious in power. Your right hand, it does what? It shatters the enemy. Psalm 62 11, he says, Once God has spoken twice, I done heard that power belongs to God. Man, the testimonies that we have, we can't keep them shut up in our bones. We got to share because they mean so much when they are uttered towards God's praise, but when they heard by God's people. Amen. 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 That's a praise of thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. This Jesus who is, who is reaching out for you this morning, if you want to know him as your personal Lord and Savior, just slip up your hand. Just slip up your hand. If you want to know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior this morning, just slip up your hand with all the saints praying because somebody needs to get to know Jesus this morning. Somebody needs a Savior this morning. You heard all the testimonies. These are the things that, that he can do for you in your life if you just trust him, if you just trust him. Amen. If you're online and you want to know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior this morning, just say this prayer with me. Dear Lord, I am a sinner and deserve the punishment for my sin. I believe that Jesus paid the penalty for my sin. I ask for God's forgiveness. I will follow Jesus and I confess him as my Lord and Savior. I receive the free gift of salvation in Jesus Christ today. Amen. Amen. We want to pray for the congregation this morning. I know I got a lot to be thankful for to you. Do you have a lot to be thankful for this morning? Amen. We just want to say a prayer of thanks this morning. So let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning. Lord, we thank you for giving us strength in our bodies. Lord, we thank you for giving us a voice to praise you with, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you've given us, Lord, a place to live, Lord, and food to eat and air to breathe and people to love and people to love us, Lord. We thank you for that, Father. We thank you, Lord, that in the midst of all that's going on around us, Lord, you've kept us safe this morning, Lord. You kept us here this morning, Lord, and so we know that you still have a purpose for us, God, and we thank you for what that purpose is, Lord. We pray, Father, that you would just continue, Lord, to just bless each and every person, each and every household that's represented here this morning, Lord. 
We thank you for all of the things that you brought us through, Lord. We thank you for bringing us through sickness, Lord. We thank you for bringing us through addiction, Lord. Some of us you brought through homelessness, Father. Some of us you brought through joblessness, Lord. Some of us you brought through poverty, Lord. Some of us you brought through loneliness, Lord. We thank you, Father, for each and everything you brought us through, Lord. And we know, Lord, that because you brought us through those things, Lord, you can bring us through whatever's coming down the pike, Lord. We thank you for being God all by yourself, Lord. We thank you for our family and our friends, Lord. We thank you for Great Commission Church, Lord, and for the family that we have here in Jesus Christ, Lord. We thank you, Lord, most of all, for saving us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for dying for us, Lord. We thank you for, for rising for us, Lord. We thank you for speaking to us, Lord, in our loneliest and our darkest moments, Lord. We thank you that you are still there. We thank you, Lord, for forgiving us for everything that we have done and everything that we're going to do. We thank you, Lord, for forgiveness, Father. We pray, Lord, that you would just bless us and keep us, Lord, so that we may serve you, Lord, and glorify you in all that we do, in all that we say, in how we live and how we walk and how we move, Lord. We pray, Lord, that we would glorify you in every single thing, Lord. We thank you, Father, for who you are. We thank you for what you've done. We thank you for being God. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.